there are, I guess, advantages and disadvantages to the remote version of the classroom. Um, one advantage is that the lectures are recorded and uh, will be posted on Kaltura so that one can go back and have a look at them. Um, we will, of course, wrestle, wrestle with the issues of doing this remotely. Um, I'll mention this again once more people are here, but I do take attendance. And the way I take attendance is you type your name into chat. Uh, so if you, uh, if you want to be recorded for being here, uh, type your name into chat and I keep track of that. It's not part of the grade, but it is something that uh, I, I do with the remote classes because it uh, lets me keep track of who's still participating in things. So I can see already stuff is flowing into chat. That's great. Um, the other thing about the chat is um, I can't see it when I'm sharing the screen. So uh, 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 I, I, I won't actually respond to questions in chat. Uh, in terms of questions, feel free to in, interrupt me at any point. Uh, just unmute yourself and say, hey, I have a question and uh, I'm, I will stop what I'm doing and listen to you. Um, so let me go ahead and share screen here and clean things up a little bit. One. this over here and okay so um this is uh COS 312 uh introduction to game programming with unity um i i expect some of you have tried to write video games by uh writing a a code that does everything that does the lighting, that does the physics and all of that stuff. But uh, we're going to take a much higher level approach where we use a game engine, uh, sometimes called a software development kit, depending on it. Um, th this, of course, is how most of the uh, game development companies do it. They often have their own uh, game engine. Um, for your curiosity, here's a list uh, at the bottom of uh, many, many game engines uh, that, that you can uh, have a look at. Some of them are free, some of them aren't. Um, the ones with the um, uh, game development houses are usually proprietary, uh, uh, but there are a number of free ones uh, sometimes uh, they offer a demo version that has some limitations. Um, Unreal is an example of this, and Unity is another one. Uh, uh, these are all links to various uh, 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 places where you can download Unity. You can look at the Unity Learn site, which we'll be using a lot in the class. Uh, there's a nice first day tutorial. And I believe you can, if you're a Linux person, there is uh, now a, an official uh, uh, Unity for Linux. Um, Unity doesn't disable their personal version. There's a student version that gives you some free assets and there's a personal version that, that just lets you use it. Um, um, there are no disabled features in Unity personal. It has all the uh, exact same uh, gizmos that the, the pro version has. Uh, the pro version is kind of pricey and it does have certain extra features, one of which is cloud builds. When you compile your game, you can do it on their servers, uh, analytics, custom splash screens, and some other stuff. Uh, a nice thing about the Unity game engine is it deploys to just about every hardware you can imagine, uh, Macs, PCs, Linux, iOS, Android, uh, WebGL, you can, you can compile your game to play in a web browser, and, and many, many others, uh, some of which, of course, cost money, uh, but others are, are free. 
Um, the personal version actually allows you to make money, but uh, you're limited to a $100,000. Uh, this is their license agreement that shows you different things, talking about uh, revenue and so forth. Uh, you, of course, should read the license agreement. Um, Unity is a uh, comprehensive game development platform that abstracts a lot of the details uh, uh, away from the user. Things like maintenance of uh, uh, your assets, uh, maintenance of different scenes or levels that you have in your game, uh, the lighting uh, with uh, lit shaded objects, real-time shadows, uh, uh, there are various advanced features such as depth of field, motion blur, uh, lots of different stuff. And it has a very advanced physics engine. I think it's based on PhysX, uh, which is an NVIDIA uh, game, uh, physics engine. And um, uh, it, it does a lot of stuff. And here quickly uh, are some examples. Uh, this is a little racing game. Oh, sorry. Um, Wait, I don't want to turn. Sorry about that. Let me mute audio and play it. So this is a little racing game in a in in the kind of world uh, that you can build in Unity, and you can see the physics going on all already here as things crash and. Uh, bump into each other, and uh, uh, right now this is the, this camera, which is an example of uh, Cinema Machine, is tracking the leader car here, uh, actually car number four, and um, you can see this is a realistic looking world with uh, lots of light and shadows and materials and uh, great physics that lets us do kinds of cool stuff. Um, another, another example here is uh, uh, an old uh, demo from uh, actually Unity 3, I think, might, might have been this one. Um, and I've set it up to actually work in, in Unity 219 here, if it ever loads. So this is, this is, again, another realistic looking world. It's taking forever to load. Um, so this is, you can see the, the water here. There's uh, uh, advanced water. I've got various guns and rockets that fire things out into the world. Um, and uh, you can see that those projectiles are following parabolic paths. Unity has a great physics engine. And I got to mute the audio because the water's making noise. Um, but these are these are the kind of uh, scenes that we can develop in Unity if we're willing to put the work into it. Um, the uh, Unity plays well with uh, uh, most of the 3D content creation programs. Let me close these because they're obviously sucking up a lot of resources. Um, it works, uh, most of the 3D content, things like those cars and such forth uh, can be built in Maya or Cinema 4D or Lightwave or uh, Free Blender. Uh, but uh, it also has some simple builder tools that allow you to create simple objects uh, within Unity. 
Uh, the simple tools have cubes and spheres and cylinders and capsules. Um, but Unity uh, uh, a year or so ago uh, purchased Pro Builder, which is kind of a, uh, uh, a simpler version of Blender that lets you build uh, more complex objects. Um, it also works uh, more or less seamlessly with uh, 2D texture uh, tools, things like Photoshop and GIMP that you can make textures in. And all of these assets are uh, easy to import, uh, organize, and manage within the editor, which we'll talk about a lot here. Um, there is a, uh, a, a set of uh, standard assets. Um, that for some reason, they've stopped offering it with, uh, since Unity 2.18 but you can get it with Unity 2.17 and it works pretty well uh, right up through the current versions. Uh, those standard assets, I'll show you later, have uh, first and third person character controllers. They have uh, 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 a number of different cameras uh, uh, with effects like lens flare. Uh, they have lights and shaders and uh, of course the uh, physics engine, uh, we'll see that the terrain, there's a terrain editor that lets you sculpt the terrain that you're going to play with. And of course, uh, cars, airplanes, other kinds of vehicles, all uh, uh, that you can get for free uh, with Unity. Uh, some of it you have to get from the asset store, but other stuff uh, is free. Uh, once upon a time, uh, Unity had three languages, JavaScript, C Sharp, and Boo. Uh, and one by one, those languages had disappeared and were down to only C Sharp. Uh, 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 if, if you do want JavaScript, it's still available in Unity 2.17, uh, but they've stopped uh, supporting it in the documentation. Uh, uh, they found that everyone was using C Sharp anyway, and it is a much better language than JavaScript. You can read about it down here in these blogs. Um, so um, uh, there are uh, a lot of exercises that we'll do uh, will emphasize scripting, but if you're not a strong programmer, uh, don't worry, there's still plenty of content that you can do uh, just with the prepackaged assets. Uh, uh, the standard assets are available here, or you can download Unity 2.17 and they come with that. Now, if there's one drawback to Unity, it's that there's no textbook. Uh, uh, I... Um, I started this class with uh, Unity 3 back in 2010, and uh, the average time between major re releases was about seven months. And the printed books just couldn't keep up. There are a number of great printed books out there, but they're all for Unity 3 or Unity 5 or Unity 217. They can't keep up. And you'll also find that a lot of the video content that's uh, uh, at, in, on YouTube is also out of date because it's for an earlier version of Unity. Um, and this, my solution to this problem is to use the Unity manual. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the manual. It comes with whatever current version of Unity you're using, comes with a manual. Uh, and the manual is quite comprehensive. And so we'll be using that manual and the uh, scripting uh, uh, reference, as well as videos that come from Unity. My assumption is if Unity is posting it, it's probably pretty current uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, hopefully up to date. So uh, uh, an example, here, uh, this is our first week's assignment. Uh, uh, there are various videos to watch. Many of them are 
uh, five or 10 minutes. They're, they're pretty quick. Uh, there are a number of references to the manuals. Uh, uh, learning the interface goes to the manual. And uh, on the assignment sheets that are posted on Brightspace, these are all links that go to the various uh, videos and readings that I want you to do. Uh, the first assignment is fairly simple. Um, uh, you have a choice of either doing the four tutorials that are still referenced on the Unity Learn site, Interactive Tutorials. Um, and uh, all you have to do is run through these four quick tutorials. They take about five minutes uh, and uh, post a screen capture of the done page for each of these tutorials. Now, a problem is that Unity deprecated these tutorials. So they no longer, while they still have the, the page up for it, they no longer offer the tutorials. I have copies of them that I've posted on my Google, Google Drive. There's links for it here. And so you'll go to my Google Drive and it'll be under the 312-2022 the assignment one tutorials. There are versions for 2.18 and 2.19. These don't work in Unity 2.20 or 2.21, uh, but these are the, the tutorials if, if you're gonna, if you wanna use 2.19 or 2.18. If you wanna use Unity 2.20, uh, um, these won't work. So alternatively, you can do either the FPS microgame or the carding microgame projects. Um, uh, these look like this. And they have the tutorials have various stages. And as you complete each tutorial, it'll put a check mark and completed. You can either screen capture the completed done. Uh, uh, screen from the play test, or you can just screen capture uh, uh, this little piece and turn that in. So for the these this first assignment, it's basically a proof that you've got Unity working, that you've struggled through loading a game and. Uh, 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 getting it going. And uh, incidentally, for those of you doing 220, uh, this is the hub, which I'll talk about in a second, but under learn here, uh, under projects. So if I go to open a new project in the hub, it asks me what version of Unity I wanna use, and it shows me the templates that are available. We usually use just the core 3D, but if you want the carding micro game or the FPS micro game, they're right here when you open this. And I tested this this morning, the carding and FPS uh, appear to also work in 219 if you wanna do it. They don't work in 218. So that's the hub, and I'll show you more about that in, in a little bit. Um, and uh, our assignments are due on Sunday, Sundays at midnight. So uh, 123 this coming Sunday is when you need to turn in to the Brightspace a screen capture of uh, the tutorial done pages. Um, any questions about that? No. So um, let me go back to sharing then and, and feel free to interrupt. Don't be quiet if you have something that you need to say. So, um, so we'll see assignments like this uh, basically every week. None of them are very big but uh, uh, they come regularly. Um, as I mentioned, these, these 
links all go to videos. Um, most of them are on the Unity site, um, but uh, the links that I've put in these assignments mostly go to YouTube versions of the video. Um, um, and uh, as such, uh, some of them may disappear. Unity decides they're out of date and disappears them. Uh, if you run into broken links, please inform me so that I can fix things. Um, expect uh, probably an hour uh, a week of uh, watching videos and readings. Uh, but of course, I, I expect more time to actually do the different things and become familiar with things. Uh, as I mentioned, there'll be readings from the manual and from the scripting reference as well. And uh, there are weekly milestones, weekly assignments that have to be turned in. Uh, with the exception of this first assignment that only requires the screen captures, um, turning in assignments will be the entire game folder, which you will zip up into a single file and deposit on your Google Drive and the thing that you turn into the to the Brightspace is the link to the Google Drive. Turns out Brightspace can't handle these big files that we generate in this class. I end up getting gigabyte files from you guys and Brightspace just dies when uh, uh, that kind of stuff is loaded to it. So we'll use the Google Drive as our uh, channel for uh, 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 downloading things or uploading things. Um, there are these weekly milestones, uh, but at the end, there's a, uh, a large final project that uh, I'll talk about in much more detail later, but it can either be a modification of uh, a Unity provided game, or of course, I recommend a game completely of your own design. I like originality. So uh, before I do this, let me switch to the editor choice here. And I did post this as an announcement on the Brightspace, but I wanna go through it a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, Unity is constantly updating. Uh, uh, since the last time I counted, there were 200 distinct versions of the Unity editor going back just to 217. And there's Unity 5 and Unity 3, and it goes way, way back. Um, so they kind of are, uh, uh, you know, there have been the major updates of 217, 218, 219, 220. 221 is out there. That's not ready yet. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, and three or four different versions of each of those and dozens and dozens of uh, updates as they go along. Well, that, what, what one thing Unity does is they specify a long-term support edition. And these are generally ones that have stabilized. They're, they're more or less bug-free and they're guaranteed to have support. This is for production people who are making a game and they wanna lock into a particular version of Unity and know that things are not gonna break things break when you move from 217 to 218 and from 218 to 219 and so forth. Things break when you uh, go from one version to another. But the long-term support ones are guaranteed to have upwards uh, compatibility as they release new versions. And uh, I highly recommend using uh, a long-term support version. Uh, 2020, uh, now has a long-term support, 2020.3, uh, and they guarantee uh, uh, updates until mid-2022, and then monthly updates until 2023. So they're going to keep 2020.3 up to date as we go along here. Um, Unity 2021 is there. Uh, uh, it's only a dot two version at this point, and uh, I find it to be kind of buggy. 
Uh, it crashes my computer all the time, like it just locks up the whole screen and everything's dead and I have to press the reboot button. It's a pain in the butt. Um, uh, 2020.3 is, uh, is a long-term support one and is reasonable. I use 2019 a lot. Uh, it's a version 4.4, so it's quite stable. Uh, and it's been around for a while and the bugs have really been flushed out of it. So uh, I, I recommend 2019 or 2020, but not 2021. Um, I, I'll often use a, in my in-class demos uh, a 2019. I sometimes even use 2018s, but uh, uh, Generally, there's no issue upgrading from 2019 to 2020. If there is, I'll post dual versions of it. Uh, no guarantee with 2021. It's uh, kind of a beast. Um, all of these uh, uh, long-term support versions are available on the download archive link here at the bottom. Um, I mentioned that the interact the four interactive tutorials only work in uh, 218 or 219. Uh, the uh, FPS micro game and carding micro game uh, by default use 2020, uh, but uh, I, I think they'll work in 2019 if you want to. One thing about the FPS micro game and carding micro game that drove me crazy was that. Uh, uh, the input controls do not work unless your mouse is in the game view window and, and it's the active window. And so if, if you, your mouse is in the wrong place, the inputs don't work and it makes the uh, uh, tutorials quite frustrating. So uh, any questions there about the version of Unity, uh, uh, I, I don't recommend 2021, although you can use it. Uh, I, I recommend 2020 or 2019. Any questions? Okay. So, um, assuming, whoops. Assuming that you've got a copy of Unity and you've, uh, 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 you don't need the pro version, of course, we don't want to spend that kind of money. Uh, you get a, uh, uh, presumably downloaded the hub. And I'll mention the hub here. This is the Unity hub. And uh, one thing, that's nice about it is it allows you to very easily maintain many different installations of Unity. I have uh, Unity 2.17 that uh, uh, still plays well with JavaScript, 2.18, 2.19. I have two versions of 2.19.4, of 2.20, and 2.21. All of these are the editors that I have. And this is also a good place to install the editor. You can uh, uh, do the install here. It handles all the questions and uh, so forth. Um, the other thing is that it maintains a list of your most recent games that are opened. Uh, here's that boot camp that I just showed you uh, uh, flying around in and the uh, Road Racer one that uh, were, were just opened. It keeps track of what versions those were used. That Road Racer was in 218, the boot camp was in 219. Um, and so this keeps track of all of this for you. Uh, there's also the learn page that has uh, 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 various uh, assets that are available from Unity. Uh, uh, including those tutorials that I asked you to do. And there's also a link to the Unity community, which is blogs and forums and other stuff that is a lot of help as you're uh, doing things. So um, um, we start a game. Um, uh, uh, I've, got, I've got the Unity hub here in my uh, dashboard. 
Um, uh, and I can uh, open that and uh, uh, start a new version. Uh, when you start a new version here uh, under new project, you get to pick if you have more than one installation, which one it's going to be. Uh, you specify a location where you want where where on your disk you want the new project to start and give it a name. Uh, generally, one starts with just the 3D core. Uh, there's the high definition render pipeline. I don't recommend the universal render pipeline. I also don't recommend. Uh, these are, uh, 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 this is for lightweight hardware. This is for heavyweight hardware. Uh, and there are other different things that uh, you're welcome to have a look at. Uh, and when you create a project. I'm not going to actually create a project here because I already have. Um, the first time you load a project often takes a while, um, um, particularly when you're uh, loading one of the uh, tutorials or templates. It has to compile the game uh, and not compile it in the sense of making it ready to play on some other hardware like uh, uh, an iPhone or uh, a tablet, but compile internally for itself. Um, happily, it keeps all of that information. So the next time you open a game, it happens quickly. Uh, so um, uh, I've already got day one practice up here. So we'll pretend, whoops, I don't want that one. We'll pretend that I just opened the game. Don't say that's my dog in the background making all the noise. Oh, um, I didn't show you, but this is this is one of the tutorials, one of the one to four, two eighteen, two nineteen tutorials, uh, and these walk you through various things. Uh, uh, they describe different features of Unity Editor. Uh, they uh, point you to which button to actually try and use and let you do various things uh, within the, the tutorial. And then it tells you to go on and do something else. And uh, here's the, whoops, well, I canceled it. The, there's the done page for, uh, that you would capture. So uh, here's our here's our day one practice, um, and so this is what this is what it would look like uh, when you start this up. It uh, uh, this is a, a two nineteen version here. Two twenty would look a little different. Uh, 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 it, it has sort of different coloration maybe. Uh, and this is kind of the default layout. Um, so when we start a program, we need to set its directory, add various packages if we need them. And we're gonna now look at the interface. Now you see right away that there are a number of windows in the user interface. Excuse me, I gotta take a plastic jar away. Sorry about that. So there are a number of windows here. Uh, there's the scene view, the game view, uh, the scene view is the game view. Uh, it actually has the asset store here. I'm not gonna do anything with that. The hierarchy, uh, the project view, and uh, the inspector. I don't want that. dog place with things. So uh, the uh, layout is completely customizable. You can move stuff around by just kind of grabbing things and moving it where you want it. Uh, uh, I'll close that asset store window. I'll close that tab because I don't, oops, I closed the wrong tab.
Leave it right now, right now. Um, you can, I'll get that scene view, where is it? Lost the scene view window. Um, so you can move these different things around, arrange your screen the way you like it, and then save it to various different configurations. Uh, so this is kind of my standard scene. It's got uh, my, my standard editor. It has the lighting, the light explorer. It has the console where error messages appear, the hierarchy, and the game scene view and inspector. Uh, but I've also got things for uh, specific things that I want to do. So if I'm working with animation, I've got a window that's set up, uh, uh, an editor layout that's set up to do animation. And there are a number of standard ones, the two by three and the four split. These are, these come automatically. And uh, when you get a layout that you like, you just save that layout and uh, 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 you then have access to that anytime you want it. Liba, Liba, lie down, go, go. Sorry. Um, so we can customize it, we can drag them around, you can resize the different, the different uh, uh, windows. Uh, you can open and close different uh, windows, uh, arrange them and save them. So that's all a good thing. Liba, what is it? Um, so let's look at some of these windows. One of these is the, uh, the project view. One of them is the project view. And the project view has all of the assets that you've got in your uh, in your game. Now, I've already loaded a couple of the a couple of things in here. I've loaded some of the standard assets, uh, in particular the first person character, which is a a, a little uh, uh, a character that can. So, could you call Liba? Liba. Sorry. My dog's a nut. Um, um, but uh, these are the assets uh, that you have in your game. They're not the things that are in the scene. We'll be putting things in the scene ourselves. But these are the assets that you may download from the asset store or create yourself or whatever, or, or uh, the standard assets. And I want to show you the uh, directory structure here. Uh, this is the uh, game folder. And as uh, I mentioned, the thing that we turn in for our big, our, our homeworks are the game folders. And we turn them in by uh, compressing them into a single folder. Uh, and then that compressed version, that compressed version is what we deposit on our Google Drive for me to play with, to grade. Now in that folder, we see an assets folder that has exactly the same stuff that is in the game. So here in assets, there's a bouncy object, there's the bouncy physics material, there's a folder that I've made called My Assets that has stuff that I might make. There's the Scenes folder that has in it the two scenes, the day one and the sample scene, and so forth. So uh, the structure of our game folder on our hard drive is the same as the structure of uh, what we see in the assets of the project. Now, one warning is don't make a folder named assets inside assets. This confuses Unity for some reason. Uh, so if you want to use the assets word, make it my assets or underscore assets or the assets or 
something else. Uh, uh, having an assets folder inside the assets folder seems to confuse Unity. This other stuff, the library, logs, packages, project settings, and temp, these are all things that you don't need to fiddle with. Uh, 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 so actually don't, no one knows what goes on inside here, but it's important stuff. Uh, you can actually drop assets uh, into these folders, but uh, it's probably not recommended. It's better to drop assets into the game editor. Uh, I'll show you that later when we get to importing assets. Um, the things can be created here in the project view with this little download button here. So I, I can create a folder here. Uh, I'll call it uh, tests. Uh, so that makes uh, tests. So that makes a folder tests that I can put stuff in. Uh, but there are lots of other things that I can make uh, shaders, uh, playables, uh, scenes, uh, uh, materials, uh, physics materials, and so forth. Lots of different things that we can make that then kind of make a template of whatever that object is that we want to create. Um, when we when we make a scene here, so let me start with a, a, a simple game object here in the scene view. Uh, this is the scene view. This is where we create our game. And I think I talk about the scene view here. Oh, no, I won't, I'll talk about the game object first here. So in my scene view, I'm going to create a game object. And there are various primitives that we can create, things like cubes, spheres, lights, cameras, and other things. But I'm going to create an empty game object. And so here's my empty game object. Uh, it's in the, the hierarchy, which is where we see all the things that are in our scene. We have a camera, we have a light, and we have a game object. By default, uh, when you make a new scene, it comes up with a camera and a default light. So the game object, let me call it uh, uh, empty, uh, has one component. Uh, we're going to add lots of components to our objects, including the uh, scripts that we write that we can add to our objects. But every game object has at least one component, the transform. And the transform tells where the object is, what its orientation is in space, and what its scale is. So it's position, orientation, and size. And all objects, all game objects, have a transform. You can't delete it. You can't turn it off. Um, but we can add other components, and we can do this in any of a number of different ways. I can add a component from this menu, or I can add a component from this menu. Let me do it from here. So I want, uh, I want say, to give this a light. So I've now added a component that is a light. This is now a point light. It has a range of 10 and it's a color white and some other stuff we'll talk about. In the scene view, it has a gizmo that will, lets us see what the thing is. Uh, you can turn on and off gizmos here if you don't want to see them. Um, and in order to be able to see the effect of the light here, I'm going to drop a plane into the scene. Uh, and I'm going to reset its transform so that it goes back to zero, zero, zero. And my light here, uh, uh, you can see the effect of the light as it shines on this plane. Um, the, um, you notice uh, uh, I, I 
if I click on the plane, it kind of focuses my attention on the plane. It automatically scales the scene view so that I can see the whole thing. Uh, when I click on the light, this empty game object that now has a light in it, uh, I can now see the whole object. It has a range of 10. And so uh, 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 it backs me up. If I make that range smaller, it moves in. It kind of automatically scales so that you can see the whole object in the scene view. Um, you, can, uh, you can, of course, delete components. Uh, uh, you can turn them on and off individually. Uh, this is something that will enable, that will access in scripting, the ability to turn on and off these different components. And you can actually turn on and off the entire object uh, this turns it on and off, sets it to be not active. It's still there, but it's not participating in the game. Um, the manual is accessed here from the help menu. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff here, but primarily we'll look at the manual which opens a web browser for the Unity manual. Notice this is a file dot slash slash. This is not an HTTP. This is going to the copy of the manual that is downloaded with this version of the game. So it's specific to the 219.4 version that I'm looking at. And this has, this is a, a, a huge uh, uh, thousands of page manual that has all kinds of stuff uh, about how to do various things. And I will be assigning readings uh, from the manual. There's also the scripting API that uh, lets us look up various features like the light and uh, lets me look at the light. Uh, and in the manual for the light, it tells me uh, all of the different properties of the light that are accessible, uh, all of the different methods, the, the uh, 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 functions are, uh, that are available uh, with lights, as well as things that it inherits from uh, mono behavior. Uh, and the nice thing about the scripting manual is that in many cases, it has a little sample fragment of code to show you how to do whatever it is you want to do with the light. So uh, if, we, if we look at the color feature here, it shows me a couple of scripts that show you how to adjust in scripting the color of the light, the things that you need to do this. And these are complete full scripts that you can copy and paste into your own scripts and, and, uh, and actually run them. So uh, uh, both of these features are really nice. They're built in, they're part of the installation of your game uh, editor, and uh, I will be assigning readings from them. Uh, the readings usually go to a 2020 version because they go to the, to the uh, uh, Unity website manual. Uh, uh, there are subtle differences among the versions, but uh, most of the content that I deal with in this class, the uh, not advanced features, are all the same. And so uh, they'll, they'll be pretty much the same. So um, I'm kind of running out of time here. Um, quickly, uh, uh, so here, here's my uh, well, let me bring in another little game object here that's easier to see. I'll bring in a cube, uh, and I'll. Uh, I, anytime you want to go back to the defaults of uh, of something, you can reset the transform. And uh, in this scene view, there are a number of ways to move around. We have the hand, which you can also get by pressing Q. And this lets you pan around in the scene view. Um, if you shift, uh, if you uh, right mouse, it orbits 
left mouse pans and left mouse and shift. No, left mouse and WAS and D lets you fly around in the world. This uh, is called the airplane mode. So you can you can manipulate your world uh, view in the in the scene view uh, with the hand control. You can do it as well with the other ones. Uh, one nice trick here, uh, if you select the camera and go up here to game object and say align with the view, this will now set the camera so that it's exactly the same way it is in the scene view. Um, so I have this little cube and I can go to the next tool, the translate tool. And with this, I can now move this object around. I can drag it back and forth. Uh, uh, it has various handles. This is only moving in, in the uh, red green, uh, that's X, Y plane. Uh, but there's uh, a little gizmo here to move it in the uh, X, Z plane. Uh, and uh, we can move our objects around uh, with, with the gizmo. Uh, there are also kind of standard views here, left, right, forward, back, top, and bottom. These are kind of standard views that you can uh, whoops. These are kind of standard views that you can get if I want to go back to what the camera, if I go now here to game object align view to selected, this is now I'm aligning the scene view to what the camera sees. And so that puts me back in that same view. So moving around with the hand tool and translating things with the translate tool. Uh, I'll continue next time with the rotation tool, things like being able to rotate an object with the rotation tool and scale, being able to scale objects with the scale tool. And I'll continue in more detail with that next time. Um, I do recommend having a three button mouse uh, and uh, you can do it with a trackpad if you know what all the shortcuts are, but it, uh, it's really a pain in the butt. So I'll stop there. Uh, any, any questions? I'll stop sharing here, entertain any questions. And uh, while class is officially over at 1150, I will usually stay here for a while after class. Uh, uh, you can stay here for a while after class and talk amongst each other. Uh, uh, so any questions? Um, oh, a reminder, if you haven't already, type your name in chat for my attendance records. It's not part of the grade, but I do keep track. So any of you ringers, uh, i.e. people who've been using Unity for years and know all about it? No one wants to talk. All right, well, I'm gonna stop recording at this point.